Howdy everyone, so Spongebob games. What is there even left to say about Spongebob games? I feel like every millennial slash zoomer has said all there is to be said about Spongebob games, particularly from the early 2000s, as there are a couple games that are just absolutely fantastic and stand the test of time. In fact, one of them is getting remade and releasing just around the corner. At this point in time, everyone is nostalgia for these games, myself included, and while everyone has talked about these games to death, I'm going to do something that nobody else has ever done on the internet. Rank my top 7 Spongebob games. That's right, my top 7 favorite Spongebob games. I'm only including games that I've played on this list, so if a certain game, like Truth or Square, isn't on the list, I probably didn't play it, or the alternative, which is it wasn't even good enough to get on the list. We'll be ranking these games based on quality, obviously, nostalgia, and how well they hold up today. Remember though, this is just my opinion. And yeah, some of these are my favorite games of all time. And if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear your list in the comments, but I'm going to disagree with you. With all that said, time to stop messing around. Let's get started with the list. At number seven, we have SpongeBob's Boating Bash released for the Wii and is potentially the most unknown SpongeBob game of them all. After SpongeBob fails his boating test again, he gets tricked by a fish to take driving classes. However, these are not actual driving classes, rather destruction derby classes. The game is a destruction derby style game. Play with the Wii remote sideways, you go through a series of events that involve Spongebob and friends smashing, crashing, and bashing each other in some unique challenges. The game was not great by any means, was really short and quite mediocre to be honest, but it was the best option for number 7 here. The driving was kind of wonky, the controls weren't exactly very good, and the game felt incredibly low budget. But I mean I still had some fun here and it's pretty hard to make a destruction derby game not fun at all besides those questionable twisted metal games. The story was okay, the game was a decent representation of Spongebob, the show was already floundering at that point and quickly going downhill, multiplayer was where I had the most fun but overall there isn't much to talk about here and there's a reason nobody really talks about this game. At number 6 we have Spongebob Creature from the Krusty Krab released in 2006 for a variety of consoles and this is easily the weirdest game on the list. As a kid I always saw this game and even played it a few times but never actually owned it until way later. I just didn't see what all the hype was about and to be honest all these years later I still don't. The game takes place during multiple dreams as Spongebob, Patrick, and Plankton have their own dreams and you get to play through them. All three of them are really different and really wacky dreams. For instance, Spongebob has his bed turning into a hot rod and you have to complete some races and do some minor 3D platforming. Patrick's dream has him as a superhero where he spends a lot of the time fighting crime. Plankton is easily the most unique as he first does a 2D platformer and then he actually becomes giant and starts destroying the city like from one of my favorite episodes. Easily the most fun part of the game in my opinion. Then the final level you have to go back as Spongebob and Patrick and defeat Giant Plankton by shooting him down with a plane and kicking his butt. While none of the gameplay styles are necessarily bad, I don't think any of them particularly excel at anything. Everything felt undercooked and was generally unfulfilling. Parts of this game really just felt underdeveloped and the game clocks in at like 4 hours. The game has some nice parts to it, even some really fun parts like when you destroy everything as Plankton, but for a majority of the game I thought it was stuck in mediocrity, especially when you play as Spongebob. And playing as him in this game only reminded me of how much I liked playing him in the other games. The game has its moments when it can peak through the mediocrity and some fun can be had, but as a whole, yeah it's not that great. At number 5 we have one of the more interesting games on this list and that is Lights Camera Pants released in 05 for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. This was a rather strange game as it took the Mario Party style approach and decided to be a bunch of mini games put together. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking it's not any good, but I gotta say, you're wrong. The game isn't amazing or will even put up a test to say Mario Party 4 or 5, but I think for what it is it's actually good. There's even a story to the game, something most Mario Party games don't even have. The story is that Bikini Bottom is doing an anniversary episode of the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy show. Now for the show, they do need some characters casted, particularly the main villain. Spongebob wants to be that main villain, so he signs up for an audition, however five other Spongebob characters sign up as well. So with no better way to figure out who the villain's going to be for the show, Gil Hammerstein, a new character voiced by Nolan North of all people, decide to have the six contestants go through 30 auditions to figure out who would best fit. These 30 auditions are obviously mini games, but it is actually a pretty decent setup. 
There's even some really entertaining cutscenes throughout the game as well. Each minigame actually plays pretty different from the last, and there's really a nice amount of variety here. There's even some two versus two minigames, and everything actually fits around the SpongeBob theme. And sure, not every minigame is an absolute winner, but that's the case with every party game, but I, and I think a majority of these are actually quite fun. The common theme across all the minigames is about scoring points, as those points are then added up at the end to, to decide who the winner of the tournament is. While I gotta say the single player does have some decent offerings and more of a story than any Mario Party, it's the multiplayer where the game really excels, and I've had some fun times with this game in multiplayer ever since I was a little kid. If you like party games at all, this is definitely a unique one and a fun one, I might add. There's even a bunch of collectibles in the game, so finishing it as all the characters and doing some of the bonus stuff, there's even replay value. Overall, a fun game. At number 4 we have Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, released in 2002 for the GameCube and PS2. I vaguely remember playing this game as an early child, but not actually owning it until I was in like high school, coming back way later. And I'm glad I did. While the game isn't as amazing or as good as other 3D platformers from Spongebob, it is still pretty decent. The story is pretty relaxed as it was one of the earlier seasons in Spongebob, like we're talking like season 2, as it starts with Spongebob just playing with Gary where he finds the chest. He opens it up and well accidentally releases the Flying Dutchman and all of his doubloons. The Dutchman is rightfully pissed and actually kidnaps all of Spongebob's friends. So it's up to Spongebob to rescue his friends and stop the Flying Dutchman. The game was a fun little 3D platformer. Sure, it was basic, especially for the time, and most of the levels are really quite benign. It still has its moments of charm. The music is actually one of the better parts of the game, and yeah, it's really one of the best aspects of the game, and the voice acting is nice, and the graphics weren't too bad for when they came out. This was your more run-of-the-mill kind of platformer, I will say, but I still had a nice time with it. Sure, some of the tasks are not that exciting, and the load times are just a bit too long in this game, but I definitely still have some nice memories with it. Nowhere near as much as the next three games, but this game is alright. At number three we have kind of a cheat, and that is a very nostalgia heavy pick. And it's two games actually. The two Spongebob point and click games released for Windows back in the early 2000s. With these two being Spongebob Employee of the Month and the Spongebob Movie Game. Both of these games play nearly identical and use basically all the same assets. For the most part, they're standard point and click adventure games where you just walk around as Spongebob interacting with the world and its characters and solving some life puzzles. While the gameplay isn't exactly the most in-depth, what makes up for it is the story and the dialogue, as both of these are not only incredibly true to the show, but just downright hilarious in their own right, as there are tons of jokes and references to previous Spongebob episodes in both games. And in the case of the movie game, they even added some new stuff in there that was also actually quite funny, such as Spongebob trying to get help from a chiropractor, but not having a spine. It's goofy, it's pretty quirky, and these games are very forgotten. They are very nostalgic to me as I remember them playing. I remember playing them on my old computer that my parents had in the early 2000s, and I gotta say they're extremely underrated even for Spongebob games. There's no way to play these in a modern setting either. You actually need the original disc or pirating it. I do have the original disc, but like I said earlier, I played it back in the day, and it's a shame because most of these these two games are actually worth picking up, and it's like, how are you even going to play them nowadays? I know it's uh, not the most conventional pick for a Spongebob game, especially on a list like this, and when it comes to the best, but I have a lot of love for these two games, and I figured they're similar enough that I could put them together, and I very much enjoy both of them. So for number two, we have the Spongebob movie game released around when the movie came out. This game is a certified classic and is one of the best movie tie-in games ever. Following the movie pretty well, the game is a 3D platformer that is very similar to Battle for Bikini Bottom, running on the same engine using many of the same assets and gameplay styles. The game is much more linear than Battle for Bikini Bottom and introduces a few new gimmicks such as driving the car and going down slides in a bathtub. You play as only Spongebob and Patrick throughout the game, like the movie, collecting Goofy Goober tokens and just having a blast. The music is great, and I'd say just about every level, yeah, really every level, has a good sense of humor and is actually good to great. 
and this is definitely one of my most nostalgic games of all time. It follows the movie really well actually and even uses a sort of weird cutscenes from the movie and even includes a few boss battles with the final boss just being epic. And don't get me wrong, this game is great. It's fantastic even. But it only made number two on my list. And there's one game that really just perfected this formula. And well, it came out before this game came out. And it can make the Spongebob movie game almost feel like a slightly lesser version of that previous game. Not to take anything away from the movie game, but this next one is just a little better. And at number one we have a very obvious Spongebob battle for Bikini Bottom. It's just, it's like, it's so obvious it's gonna be number one. Like, what else could it be? Really, what else could it be? No Spongebob game has ever been as good as Battle for Bikini Bottom. And a majority of Spongebob fans know that. Even THQ Nordic knows that. Which Spongebob game are they remaking? They're remaking Battle for Bikini Bottom. It just got everything right with a light-hearted, fun story about Plankton trying to take over the world with robots and them not listening to him, to Spongebob and Patrick wishing robots were real, the story was just dead on for Spongebob. Aside from Mr. Krabs, all the voice acting was spot on as well and just really well done. The music is fantastic, the graphics were decent for when they came out, aside from some really strange textures and faces, they were, they were still decent, and the gameplay was superbly done. Minus the kelp forest, every level is just fantastic in the game, no question. They are all just really well crafted, mostly open areas that you just explore around and collect all the collectibles, similar to say Banjo-Kazooie, and everything was Spongebob themed. Whether you were Spongebob, Patrick, or Sandy, it was always a fun time. There were so many gags and references to Spongebob as well, and obviously I'm extremely nostalgic for this game. It might even be my most nostalgic game of all time. This is arguably my favorite game from my childhood, and is one of my favorites, if not favorite, three platformer of all time next to Mario and Banjo. I just think it can do basically no wrong. And so this remake has got me really excited to play through the game again. I've played through the game a ton of times in my life, but this remake is going to be something special, hopefully for the right reasons. And obviously I'm extremely nostalgic for this game. So I can't wait to see you guys and gals when I review Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated in a very in-depth review over the next coming month or so. Once that's out, I'll link it on here, but I mean, the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, it's like, of course that was going to be number one. Are you kidding me? It's like not even close. So with that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that great stuff. Tell me what your favorite Spongebob game is. If you made it to this part of the video, you should totally type in like the comments bricks, like the kind that builds houses. Then we'll know. It's a secret word. And then people will look at the comments and be like, what the hell? Either way, have a great Christmas.